Holy greetings, everyone, and welcome again to the most powerful show. You know we are being transformed. We are hearing the testimony of the Lopez. I have them in the studio today, and we are going to hear their testimony again. Let's do that after the break. My friend, do you know the real Jesus who laid down his life for you? loves no matter your race, gender, or past sin? Do you know the Father who protects, the Shepherd who guides, Jesus who carries you through trials, catches your tears, cries with you, or laughs with you? Welcome to Encounter the Real Jesus. You will never be the same. Hallelujah. Pastor Erwin and your beautiful wife, it's good to have you again. How are you doing? Uh, we're doing good. Glad to be back. Yes, okay, yes. Thank you. We've got to get all that testimony out because I know it's going to help a lot of people. Yes, yes. Um, you know, th there's a lot of people that's in darkness. And so mm -hmm. if we could share with them our, our struggles and uh, the, the brightness that God has done for our, in our life, then that, that's just, you know, a miracle himself. Yeah, you see, there's a couple you see here. They have been in the pit. God's power got them out. And today, Pastor Erwin is operating under tremendous anointing. Your wife as well. You both see visions. Uh, you do deliverance. Many lives are being transformed. You know, by just looking at you, I see what the Lord has done. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Now, Maria, if we can begin with you. Last time we talked, uh, you had just lost a baby uh, in the hospital. Uh, before you go in, you had spoken it to Pastor Erwin and said, honey, please, please, if they come to you and they give you a choice who to save, choose the baby. But now you come out, you're alive, the baby is in heaven, and now you're angry at your husband. So you go home, what happens next? Yeah, so um, when we got home, I couldn't even stare at him. I couldn't see his face. I, every time I saw him, the, the anger just came out. I was angry, why and how could he have lied to me? Um, it was not fair to me at that point why I've lived my life and such an innocent child has been taken away. Mm -hmm. uh, I was angry at God, um, and especially more at my husband because I spoke to him mm -hmm. literally before going into surgery. As they're willing me away into the surgery room, I did. I asked him, I said, if you had to choose, please save the baby for I've lived all my life already. I was, you know, just in case, I wanted to make sure that that was very clear. You know, I am glad that he made that choice because I'm very sure the baby's in heaven. But at the time, you were not saved. So God was not done with you. I truly believe 100% that, brother Erwin, you hear from God. Yes, I do. Uh, you know, at that, you know, this, this, th we, we didn't look at this. At that time, we looked at it was, was a problem and a trouble. We were troubled, but we look at it now. It was a blessing by God. You know, yes, God a blessing in disguise. Yes, yeah. blessing in disguise. And you, you, you know. Uh, let me uh, say this: there are many people who are watching, and you're going through a hard time, and you think that's the end of it. But a couple of months down the road, or maybe a few years down the road, you are going to thank God for it because God used it to bless you. God used that situation to save you and to launch you in a full time in ministry. Yes, it's down, it didn't, God didn't only use us to save us, the, like the whole entire family. Yes. You know, my mom and my dad, my brothers. And, and plus many people plus who are coming people. to your church today. Yes, yes. Wow. Now, Sister Mary, um, you, uh, you, you got angry and now what happens according to what you said just before we come onto the show is that you hear you were hit by depression. Yeah, so I didn't realize it then, but I went into a deep, deep, dark depression. Um, I, again, yes, I couldn't stand my husband. I, I hid myself away from him. Not only that, but I hid myself away from my children. Wow. Um, I was no longer a wife, a mother. 
Um, oh. And I walked away from God. I told God if, you know, you couldn't even save such an innocent little baby, what, what God are you? Mm. And, and therefore, when I said that, now that I look back at it, I realized God took, not that God, but the enemy came and stole my, my hope, yes. my faith. And um, yeah, so for about a year, uh, my eldest son, Essekar, uh, about that time, he was about 12 or 13, he stepped up to be the parent because I was hurting, I was grieving. Um, mm -hmm. I couldn't even look at my children to hear the laughter of them and to hear their happiness. It, it hurt me more inside because there was a part of me where I felt I shouldn't even be here. Wow. Now, we're going to ask Pastor Erwini to tell us the side of his story. But before we do that, let's remind our viewers that when about the things happen, to not be angry at God because God is not the author of confusion. God is not the author of anything that is bad. But even if the bad happens to us, God steps in and he turns the situation around. Yes. Now, what were you going through during that time when you, you lost your wife, kind of, you know, when you, she couldn't talk to you, what happened? You know, I had a business. I was a, I was a black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, so I turned in there and I put my time in it. <laughs> and I, I, I totally, you know, left the families. You know, she was grieving, I was grieving on myself. And wow. we have children. And we just, I just, I just focus on myself. I was an angry person, an angry man. Mm. Uh, and, and because I didn't, know the, I didn't know the word of God, I didn't know the Bible, so I was angry of God. Wow. Now your son is Sakari steps in and take care of the little ones. What a blessing he is. Right now, the Lord has blessed him. He's going to a Bible college, right? Yes. yes. And uh, I, I believe he's going to be a pastor himself. Yes, he have, he have encountered with the Lord himself. Whatever he's doing right now mm -hmm. is what God have telling him uh, to do. Oh, so. He wanted to be a DJ, a disc jockey. Wow. And now he's going to a Bible school now. Uh, yes. During that time of depression for a whole year, uh, many things happen. You even miss the wedding of your best friend. Yes, um, she's my cousin and my best friend, um, Janice. And it was her wedding. And they were um, going out to uh, Cancun to have this big wedding uh, for her and Eddie. And she bought me a plane ticket and everything. Everything was paid for. Mm -hmm. But my depression, again, was, was so bad that I hid myself in my room. And even when I tried to come out of my room, um, it, I just felt it was too overwhelming. The pain was just too much for me. And people's happiness mm -hmm. was tormenting. Tormenting to you. Now, Janice goes, get married, but when she comes back, she invites you one day at a church. Yeah, so about a, a year later, she never stopped praying for our family. She always kept us in mind. And um, one day she called me and she said, come over let's go visit our uncle and they have uh worship um again coming from a catholic and lutheran background i didn't know what worship meant mm -hmm. i was intrigued and it also felt like there was a calling um and so i went to the worship not knowing what it is and i'm sorry <laughs> my oh. Oh, dear Jesus. Now, Erwin, your wife goes to church. You think like she's crazy. What is she doing? Did you understand what was going on? Uh, I did not understand what's going on. We were just, we just lost a child and she's going to church. And you know, she's meeting the pastors and I, I didn't want to be with God. Mm. I didn't want to be part of the church. Wow. You know? But God had a plan. I tell you, we can fight with God, but God is going to win always. Now, we're going to take a little break, but before we take a break, I want to remind us to pray because things are beginning to happen in your life because your cousin prayed. See, when we see them running away from God, when we see them cursing God, we must pray for them. We must pray sin because the prayer of the righteous man are very much. So it is to pray and to pray and to pray. 
If you miss the Holy Fire Revival, our ministry has put together a DVD to help you experience the atmosphere of being in the presence of the Lord for four nights, together with like-minded saints, praying and worshiping the King through the night. We received God's grace through anointed messages and through impartation of holy fire, holy dance, and other spiritual gifts, one-on-one deliverance, miracles, signs, and wonders took place in our midst within the atmosphere of God's consuming fire. We have captured some of these precious moments to share with our viewers. For a gift of $25 or more, our ministry will send you the Revival DVD. Those who call to become our monthly partners will receive this gift free of charge. Order your copy today. Receive an impartation of God's holy fire. Hello, my name is Christine Komen of Blessing God Fire Church, and this is your Rocky Mountain Minute. Today, I want to challenge you to pray deep prayers, like Jesus, who while on the earth offered up prayer with a deep cries and tears to Father God. Praying a deep prayer is like taking a direct spaceship to the throne of God where we encounter Him face to face. In God's presence, Every problem is solved. Today, Jesus says, My beloved children, come to me in a prayer. Pray harder. Pray powerfully with every bone, every molecule, every cell, and with all your heart. Focus on me. Link your mind and heart to mine. My friend, such deep prayers will accomplish much. Hallelujah, hallelujah, welcome back. The Bible tells us that they overcame him by the word of their testimony. Uh, my friend, this testimony must go out. We cannot let the enemy uh, keep it from you sharing. Every time that you share this testimony, people will be saved. Every time you share what God has done for you, great, great things happen. So, we're going to continue sharing this testimony. Amen? Amen. 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 So you go to church and people are worshiping. You give your life to Jesus. It, it actually was my uncle's house. So mm -hmm. they were just starting uh, the Holy Passion Fire Church um, in one of my uncle's house. And when I went there, I had no idea what worship was. I didn't know what um, the Holy Spirit was. <laughs> and hearing people speak in tongue was all new to me. But... It wasn't a scary feeling. It felt comfortable and it felt like home. It felt mm -hmm. very, it changed me if anything. Um, but yes, yeah, so they started worshiping and the uncle who came to me, I didn't know was one of my distant uncle. And um, his name is Pastor Chuva and, and he came to me and he, uh, he started to take me through a repentance prayer. I, I had no idea, um, but he took me through a repentance prayer and I just remember as we were praying, I gave my life back to God and I just felt so much joy, so much joy that, that I started crying. Because you know, Jesus, when you give your life to Jesus, something always happened. There is a switching of kingdoms. The devil going, Jesus comes in and he sits on the throne of your heart. Now, did you say that they were speaking in tongues and did you receive the baptism of tongues as well? Yeah, so as he took me through a repentance prayer, um, he prayed over me and, and he took me into saying hallelujah and I, I had no idea what I was doing, but it, it was, again, it felt like it was the right thing to do. Wow. Um, and so I started saying hallelujah and I felt so much joy and I just remember crying because I was so happy and then I started repenting and there was a yearning and a longing to want God more, to want to know Jesus more and to ask for forgiveness. And I realized then 
that I was very childish and I was very selfish over mm. walking away from God and not bringing my children, my husband, mm. myself, not getting closer with God to lose your child, to see now that it was such a blessing and not a tragedy. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Now, Jesus walks in her life. She's never the same. Depression is gone. Even today on the program, I see people being healed and delivered from a depression. Now, God gives you a brand new wife. Did you think she's crazy or you were like, okay, what's going on here? Oh, yeah, I think, I, I thought that she went crazy. You know, being a depression is one thing, and then now she's praying in a tongue. I'm hearing him <laughs> in the house, and I'm shaking my head, and I said, oh, and, you know, I, still, I, I was angry at God, but I was still talking to God. He said, <gasps> oh, Lord, what have you done to my wife? You went crazy already. You wow. know, so uh, mm -hmm. I thought, you're speaking in tongue. I said, what is this? Mm -hmm. Now, did you invite your husband to church? Well, that night when I got saved, um, as soon as I got saved and I remember crying and he spoke to me very clearly. The first time, mm -hmm. if I could even encounter, that's the first time I encounter Jesus. Mm -hmm. Such a loving voice and, and God coming in and just speaking to me. And the very one thing that I remember the most with God, he said, bring my son, Erwin. He will lead your family and he will mm. speak my word to the nation. Bring my son. Bring, bring my son. My son. Mm -hmm. See, I think that's the role of a wife too. If there are wives out there uh, who have unbelieving husband, God wants us to bear fruit. We need to stop really fighting with them. Yeah, I know they might not be saved. But we need to bear fruit and to bring them, bring my sons into my kingdom because they're going to preach the word. So how did you receive that? Oh, I received it with angry. <laughs> you know, I'm like, no, just no way. No way a God like that will call me, just took the child. I was, I was still in depression. Mm. I was still in, at mm. myself. I was like, no way. You know, I, started la I laugh at her. I, I crucify her. Wow. So you got more crucified, you got more persecuted. Did you give up or you kept inviting him, you need to come? No, because when God told me that, I asked him, and I, I asked him, but I was speaking in tongue at that time, and I was speaking in the heavenly language, and I said, Lord, how am I going to do this? And he reassured me, I've, I've hardened his heart, but everything's going to be okay. He will come. Wow. And so you invited him to church, and did he come to church? No, not right away. Um, it was so about a month. So we should not give up. <laughs> we should not give up. It was about a month later, and there were, uh, the Holy Passion Fire Church was opening a new church here in Colorado because they're from Minnesota, and they um, were doing a revival. And so my uncle pastor, Pastor Chiva, had invited me um, to come to the revival. And, of course, my cousin Janice invited me um, to please come and bring the family. Um, so right off the bat, the, the people that were saved was me and my son, Essekar. Mm -hmm. And so we decided, okay, let's talk to daddy and let's ask daddy that. to come. And so we, we kind of mentioned it to him. We, we knew that he wasn't quite yet ready, but he, right away he was no, no. So the very last, about the week before the revival, I just went out to him and, and I said, um, hon, can you just come support me? Mm. So you go just for the sake of supporting your wife yes. and just making a peace. Yes. Now we need to hear what happened. Well, you know, there was, there was so much grieving still with me and a lot of fight, a lot of arguing in the house, you know, and I was, I was, I took myself out of the families and, and because of the argument, I didn't want to argue with her. So he argued so much and I know that she was changing, you know, I was, but I was still angry with God. And I said, like, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell her yes, I'm going to support her. But then when the time comes, I'm going to say, no, I'm not going to go. Wow. So you have your own mind, your own plans, and God has his plans. The Bible tells us that he has good plans for all of you, for all of us. And remember what we say in the beginning, when you fight with God, God is going to win. Now, Erwin, we're going to hear more. But can you take about 30 seconds and tell us just very quickly what happened? Did you live with the Holy Spirit? Did you live taking Jesus in your heart or you just stayed back? I, I stayed back for a while. I mean, it, it took me a while to go to the church. That was, mm. that was good enough for me to go with her to the church. 
And then I, and th I didn't know that they're going to change my life. So you go to the church. Tell us a little bit more. I think we have a few more I, seconds. I, I, w I went with her. I did, you know, something in, in, me, in me to, to go, not to fight. Mm -hmm. So I go, but with angry. I was angry inside. <laughs> I fight the whole time when we get to the church. And I told her, I'm going to sit down in the back of the church. And I'm, you get lucky if I even sit down in the back of the church. Wow. So I got there. Uh, you know, God is waiting for you at the church. You know what I think we need to do? Always invite them in. Don't worry about what the preacher is going to say. Don't worry. Don't be afraid. Invite them in. Because at the door of the church are mighty powerful angels. Who can run away from them? Nobody. Oh, my friend, I'm sorry. We have an enemy here, and the, our enemy is time. We've got to go, but we will be right back with you. Don't go anywhere. is here. Freedom from anxiety and depression. Freedom from all the chains that bind you. We prophesy that we declare that over your life because it was for the purpose that Jesus came. And that's why we are here, my friend. Hallelujah. To touch and agree with you. You've got to call us. You've got to call us to uh, receive a prayer, you've got to call us to support this work that we are doing. Uh, the blessings of God are waiting for you. So do not sit back and just don't do anything, call us. I'm going to ask Pastor Erwin and Maria, uh, if you sent anything, if you want to say a prayer, please, let it flow, hallelujah. Mm. You know, I want to pray for those um, uh, people that, that is just in darkness right now, that they just can't find God. And they are Christian. They, are really, they really love God. Mm -hmm. I, I just want to let you know that those dark that you have, the reason why you are going to those darkness is because God is bringing you to his kingdom and he want to share his glory. He wants to share his goodness to you. Mm. So I just, want you, I just want to remind you that even though you're going through it, just remember, smile on it. Smile. The Lord said in the Bible said, smile when the storm and smile when it's joy. But be smile and stay, stay, stay with the Lord. Don't leave him because I did it. Mm -hmm. I did it. I left the Lord. So just stay with him. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. 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 Maria, do you want to say anything? Do you say anything? Well, um, earlier I did see a, a girl uh, by the name of Jessica going through a hard time and going through trouble. And I just want to reach out to you, Jessica, that there's hope and don't give up. God is there and he sees everything. 
He sees your trouble. He sees how you are. So don't give up. He's here for you. Hallelujah, hallelujah. My friend, this is so powerful. Next week, we're going to hear this testimony. We want to get everything out of them. We are going to hear about your salvation, Pastor Erwin. But not only that, but how the angel visit our sister Maria and tell her something powerful. And how does a couple begin to move in miracle signs and wonders? When I visited them around that time, they were they had turned their house into a powerful prayer house. I can't wait to share those things with you, but we've got to go next week. Don't miss and remember to smile and to be happy. If you miss the Holy Fire Revival, our ministry has put together a DVD to help you experience the atmosphere of being in the presence of the Lord for four nights, together with like-minded saints, praying and worshiping the King through the night. We received God's grace through anointed messages and through impartation of holy fire, holy dance, and other spiritual gifts, one-on-one -on -one deliverance, miracles, signs and wonders took place in our midst within the atmosphere of God's consuming fire. We have captured some of these precious moments to share with our viewers. For a gift of $25 or more, our ministry will send you the Revival DVD. Those who call to become our monthly partners will receive this gift free of charge. Order your copy today. Receive an impartation of God's holy fire. Encounter the Real Jesus is brought to you by Christine Coleman and Blazing Holy Fire Church. For healing, deliverance, and intimacy with God, join our Sunday 7 p.m. Revival Services, 9250 East Bellevue Avenue, Greenwood Village, Colorado, 80111. For mobile giving, text GIVE to 720-586-4390. Visit theblazingholyfire.com for more options. Till next time, Jesus says, smile and be happy.